There's a new book called Rad Girls Can that features 50 stories all about uh, different kinds of girls and young women who've done incredible things all before the age of 20. And joining us are illustrator Miriam Klein Stahl and author Kate Schatz and two Chicago natives featured in the book, 18-year-old CEO of the anti-cyberbullying app, uh, Rethink, Trisha. Prabhu, uh, Pradu, and 19-year-old activist and founder of the I Project, Eva Lewis. Thank you, ladies, for being here. So tell us first, Kate, what is a rad girl? A rad girl is someone who is confident and creative and bold and has something that she believes in and really cares about, and she goes for it. Yeah. She doesn't always get it. She does not always win. She doesn't always get the gold medal, but she really, really tries and uh, wants to do something. What made you decide to put it in a book? Well, Miriam and I have worked together on two other books about rad women from history, focusing mm -hmm. on grown-up women who've done extraordinary things. And we share our books with young readers all over the country. And the request we heard the most from them was, can you make a book about girls, about people our own age? Right. So we listened. And it was so easy for you to find so many girls under 20 oh, yeah. that are doing awesome things. Oh, yeah. The challenge is knowing when to stop. I could, have, um, I could have written many, many versions of this book. There's countless stories of young women all over the world who are doing remarkable things. Right, and the illustration done by you, Miriam, is incredible. How, how powerful is art when, you, when you're speaking in the way that you are with this? Yeah, I feel like my pictures that I do, the portraits in the book, really add to Kate's words, especially for our readers that really connect with imagery. Um, it can draw in a different kind of reader to have strong, bold images in the book as well. Right, and I see you have your uh, tools in front of you right now. What I are you do, gonna I do while we're I'd doing do this thing? paper cut, why not? So, uh, so this is That's what a really paper cool. cut looks like in the book. It's one piece of black paper that yeah. I cut into. So the way that I start is, with just a black piece of paper with a drawing. So this was one I prepared to cut out at a bookstore tonight, but I'll start it here on your show. And this is the three founders of Black Lives Matter, and I decided to cut them out because we have Eva with us, uh -huh. who's Youth for Black Lives. And this is a picture I did of her and three of her. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, pals in the book here. Wow, right. Eva, what do, you, right what do you there. think of this, and how, how did you get involved? <laughs> um, Honestly, Kate emailed me and was like, you're in a, my book. And I was like, what you mean I'm in your book? <laughs> That's literally what happened. So Right, and because this is the first time that Trisha and Eva have met all of you guys, right? Because you're meeting, you wrote about these young women, but you're bringing them together here on One Day City Live. And Trisha, you're responsible, CEO for an anti-cyberbullying app. That has to be amazing. Congratulations to you. you. What made you create this app? Did it come from a personal place? It absolutely did. Um, growing up, you know, we live in a new era that's so dominated by technology and social media. And for me personally, I was bullied and cyberbullied at a young age. But the tipping point for me really was when I was 13, I came home from school one day to read the story online of this 11-year-old girl named Rebecca Sedwick who'd been cyberbullied for over a year and a half uh -huh. um, after getting into a feud with two other women, uh -huh. climbed to the top of her town's water tower mm -hmm. and jumped off. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, how is this acceptable? And I don't want to be a bystander to this situation. Right. I want to be an upstander. Um, so I decided to do something about it. Yeah, and this app has been yeah. downloaded like a half a million yeah. times. <laughs> yes, it has. And uh, we've reached 5.5 million students in the United States with our curriculum. And yeah. was featured on Shark Tank as well. Yes, uh, we were. <laughs> Go ahead. Did that help with the exposure for it? Absolutely, yes. Uh, when we were on Shark Tank, the doors opened like crazy. We got to deal with Mark Cuban and Lori Grenier. Um, and you know, we've been really blessed to be able to head to the White House um, and um, just amazing institutions across the country and around the world. Right, Eva, we want to get you in this conversation because you were responsible for the Black Lives Matter protests in um, Michigan Avenue, right? A couple mm -hmm. years ago. What made you decide to be an activist? decide to be an activist. Um, I come from a family where I've, I've consistently been told not to let my surroundings and the way that the world sees me inhibit me. Like my grandfather used to tell me, you're great for being a girl. I didn't even know sexism was a thing until I got to high school, like when I went to a PWI, a predominantly white institution, mm -hmm. because just the foundation that I had at home. Um, and so when I was thrust into that environment that was unhealthy for me as a black woman, right. I, my immediate reaction was, well, how do I combat this? Like, how do I create some type of systemic change so that the students who come after me don't have to deal with this? Yeah. And then I further started thinking about my community and the fact that I woke up at five o'clock in the morning every day to go to high school because I couldn't get an education in my own community. Right. And so thinking about how I can help the other students, the other children in my community so that we are able to get a good education 
education, then we can get a good job yeah. and we don't have to do things like resort to gun violence and gang activity in order to sustain ourselves. Yeah, and to survive. And now you've created the I Project. What is the yeah. I Project? So the I Project, I founded in 2015 before my junior year of high school. It's an activism through arts initiative rooted in intersectionality theory aiming to create equitable communities. Which Say means, that 10 yeah. times fast. <laughs> You go, girl. <laughs> yeah. Which means that even if something that we're doing is not catered towards a black woman, it will benefit a black woman, being the most oppressed subset. So our education emancipation campaign is our biggest thing. We aim to provide resources to South and West Side Elementary schools. Um, what we're trying to do is create equitable communities in lieu of the government. So regardless of what's mm. happening in the mayor's office, regardless of what's happening in the White House, we will be good. Like black people, brown people, we will be good. Right. And so um, this past Friday, actually, what we did, we had a day of action. My team, we're eight women of color, 20 years old and under, we created the first ever community needs assessment for the South Shore community. It's demographically accessible and it's South Shore specific. So we mobilized about 100 volunteers this past Friday to canvas the neighborhood, asking people what they needed and what the community needs. And we're quantifying that data, creating variables from that, and then presenting it to everyone, publishing that and being like, this is what the people have said. And we're gonna create a direct action from and that. And how old are you? 19. Wow. wow. Both of you are incredible. Hey, how are you finding these young ladies and, and people that are doing such extraordinary work? You just have to look. You just have to pay attention. It's not hard. Sometimes people ask me, you know, how did you find these stories? Because I'm interested in them. And I look and I listen and I pay attention. I listen to what young people are talking about. I read. I search the internet. Um, they're not always as easy to find as they should be, right? We should all know about the work that they're doing. This should sure. be front page news. Right. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But yeah. yeah, I pay attention. I listen. I look. And yeah. I look for stories um, specifically about young women of color, um, stories that aren't told as often. We right. do feature you know, iconic girls in the book that sure. people are familiar with, uh, Anne Frank, Joan of Arc. Helen Keller, um, but what we really wanted to do was bring to light these stories that uh, people aren't accessing but really need to. Well, Kay, thank you for bringing it to light and sharing these stories with us. Yeah, Miriam, we're going to let you keep working over there, all right? So far, she's got that yeah. already done already. There you go. Right. Big yeah. thank you to Miriam, Kate, Trisha, and Eva. Rad Girls Can is out now, and everyone in our studio audience is going home with a copy. Woo! For more info, head to WindyCityLive.com.